Welcome, Sins and Commandments alike. This is your host, Griever, as always, bringing you guys your latest Seven Deadly Sins newest season, Episode 7. Now, guys, I really got to be honest with you here. I recorded this three times already, this being the third time. I did it when it first dropped uh, the day after, and I did it a few days ago, and each time I didn't really care for the recording. I didn't like how I presented it. It's just that I didn't like this episode, guys. I really didn't. So this will be a very short review because the whole, like, I'm glad that we learned a little bit more about the Giants clan, but really it was all about Deanne and stuff. And Deanne has got to be one of my least favorite characters. So following a tread or following an entire episode based on her, uh, I, I, I just, I didn't feel like reviewing it, honestly. But now that episode eight is out, I feel like once I get this over with, we can move on and get past it and stuff. And I know there's going to be more episodes in relation to that. I just hope that episode eight kind of deviates for a while and gets us onto maybe Bond and Jericho or something like that. That'd be really nice. Um, the episode basically opens up with the same thing uh, at the end of the last one. Uh, Deanne does not know who King is and stuff, and King has reverted to his regular form, being or his, his fairy form thing, being the bearded, old, like, 35-year-old kind of Duke-looking form. Um, but she's slowly losing her memories more and more, and so they go and consult Merlin, and then they say, well, let's go examine her, and they find out, oh, wait a minute, um, she's gone, we don't know. Gother shows up with uh, Slater and kind of says, oh, it's because of Lost World. Lost World is his ability that erased her memories, because now he performed another experiment. He goes, okay, I manipulated Gila's memories, and friggin' uh deanne told me like trying to tell me off and said uh you know you can't do that precious memories will always be with you they they aren't just data and goes it's like so i tested that i erased her precious memories and they're gone so king thinks back like king at first is very like it's it's done uh pretty well the the emotion is there in the scene and stuff but once again i just this plot line I'm just not I'm not invested in so it was hard to be invested in it um to get caught up in the emotion of it but uh Gother is is kind of told off by King a little bit but then King kind of realizes well he kind of pulled the same stunt on Deanne years and years ago and kind of like but tries to see if Gother had a good reason or a justification and Gother realize, reveals that he doesn't and he gets bashed into a column by King. Now, they all decide to go after Deanne, and this is where we get back to Deanne's whole backstory after she grew up as a child and stuff with King, and King erased her memories of that meeting, and we get uh, the reveal of Matrona, who is the warrior giant uh, S, warrior chief, warrior leader. Um, we're introduced to another calm, uh, gentle giant named Loris, and we kind of, it jumps around a little different than the manga does, but the same basic premise and the same basic scenes are there. Um, the, because this is after, of course, Deanne has, has been on her own for a while and stuff, and she did meet King, and she got the new clothes and stuff, and now she's grown a little soft, according to Matrona. But Deanne is supposed to be one of the great ones to take on. Apparently, uh, Deanne is rather gifted, a prodigy of giantess, uh, you know, blood and power, and all she needs to do is get rid of that soft, you know, demeanor of her, gain a hard exterior, and she could rival the best of the giants, according to Matrona and all the other chiefs, uh, but she doesn't hold to that, she protects Dolores and says, fighting can't be the only way, I don't like this mercenary work, I don't like fighting, it goes on from there, I'm gonna skip over a lot of this stuff, guys, um, she meets Meliodas, that's, you know, Meliodas treats her like a girl that's being ganged up by guys, you know, sort of thing, rather than a giant that can take care of herself. Uh, and that's where Meliodas, uh, the infatuation with Meliodas comes from, is Meliodas treated Deanne like a, like a girl, like someone who was smaller than he was, not, uh, not like a giant or, or someone stronger that could take care of herself and doesn't need help or protecting, but someone like a girl. So that's where that infatuation comes from. We get that scene. That's relevant, but uh, once again, this whole episode is just scenes kind of connecting the dots. Uh, once she returns 
to the giant camp after going out on her own for a little bit and meeting Meliodas. She wants to return and tell Dolores, hey, you know, you were talking about leaving the clan. Guess what? There are people that will accept us out there. We can go. And that's when Matrona, uh, you know, tells her, Dolores died. I sent her out to, you know, take care of some bandits and she couldn't even pull that shit. So at least she died an honorable death and shit. And that is, that is harsh. That is like, like literally in this clan, if you are not a, if you are not a warrior, you're fodder. That's basically, there isn't one of those things where you uh, have different jobs like, oh, you know, like a caste system where you're, you're, you're a miner or a farmer or someone, you're, you're below peasant level, but you're still part of the clan. No, 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 they don't seem to have that. It's like you either bear children or you're a warrior, and if you don't do either one, you're going to die. And it's even more harsh than like a caste system, and uh, I, I, I don't... Uh, like I understand why Deanne decides to get a good sucker punch in on Matrona there. That that was cool. I I like that. Um, of course, that goes nowhere. Matrona just beats the shit out of her and says, "Look, you are a proud giantess. You need to stand strong and realize that Dolores was weak, but you are strong." Blah blah blah. All that all that crap. And at the end of the day. They go out, of course, to do another mercenary mission. They're betrayed by the Knights of Leonis, uh, whatever time this was. And uh, it's not really specified when this happened. Um, we can assume it was at least 15 years ago. Uh, I would say as a fair assessment, but it could have been longer than that for all we know. But uh, here is where Matrona's betrayed. She gets poisoned. As she took an arrow to the knee. And, uh, you know, she used to be an adventurer like you. But enough with the Skyrim references there. Uh, there's an emotional scene. Didn't find it that emotional because it was ruined by the uh, scream. It really was, guys. Uh, like, I understand the Japanese voice actors are over the top. And that's why, you know, a lot of the time English dub actors uh, really have to step up their game for their screaming and their yells and their over-the-top performance because Japanese voice actors give 120% to everything they do. They're always screaming and yelling. you got to have that DBZ level of screaming uh, to really, you know, you you don't just yell, you bellow sort of I, mentality with them. And I understand that that's always going to be higher pitched and over-the-top. But uh, this, this wail from Deanne when Matrona died took away everything I wanted at the very end of the episode they ruined a perfectly good moment I'm not blaming the voice actress um it's just I think they needed to redo that a few times like find a way that worked better uh because that uh, that that was that was like mm, that was glass shattering that hurt my eardrum sort of scream and I just I didn't care for it I stayed until the end of the credits and saw the whole uh Deanne was charged and stuff, and she that's how she became a sin, and Melio just stopped the execution and said, she's under my jurisdiction now as one of the seven deadly sins, and that's where the episode ends. Um, as I said, I skimmed over a lot of the episode here, guys, but I hit the major points. Once again, not interested in the Deanne backstory. All I was interested in was the fact that, okay, here's where we are in the story. We met Matrona, who is the current warrior chief leader of the Giantess clan, up until she died at the end of this episode. Uh, and those are the basically the key elements we got from this. We understand that Deanne was very strong for her. She was considered, uh, you know, unique or special, or at least a prodigy of battle, if she would just, you know, harness that ability and hone her training rather than, you know, the opposite. So she's very talented, very gifted, and that's all you really need to take away from this. But she left the Giantess Clan for XYZ reasons, and we know that now, and now we basically follow her going back to the Giant homeland, and that's where the Sins, of course, are also following her. Hopefully next episode we jump back over to Bonn and uh, Jericho, because because I didn't mind that storyline um, in the manga anyways. That was pretty good. Uh, but what did you guys think of the episode? Am I full of crap? Do you guys really love Deanne? Is she a fan favorite of yours? Tell me why I'm wrong about her character. And tell me why this was a great episode in the comment section below. Please like, subscribe, comment as usual. This has been Griever with your 7 Deadly Sins latest season. Episode 7 review of the anime. We will see you back here next time guys. Till then, thanks for watching. Peace out.